In his 1950 conversation at Los Alamos, novel Durat and Reco Fermi famously asked, Where is everybody? That one question led the foundation for what we now call the Fermi Paradox. The contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial life, by which is meant the aliens and the complete lack of observable evidence for their existence. Since then, this question has evolved into one of the deepest scientific mysteries of modern times. In Cosmos by Carl Sagan, the argument begins with a cosmic perspective. There are over 200 billion stars in our galaxy, and at least half may have planetary systems. If one person of those Earth-like planets there could be billions of worlds potentially hosting life. Yet, Sagan observed the silence of the skies remains absolute. In the airy silence by Paul Davies, the author explores why this cosmic quiet persists despite decades of radio telescope surveillance. Davies proposes that perhaps alien civilizations communicate in ways we cannot yet comprehend. Maybe using quantum entanglement or neutrino signals far beyond the electromagnetic methods humans rely on. So the grand theory that binds all these discussions is known as the cosmic evolutionary principle. That life is not an exception but an inevitable expression of nature wherever conditions permit. Furthermore, it suggests that biology like chemistry is a universal process. And if that is true, then the next question arises. If life emerges so easily, why have we not met anyone yet? Scientists have attempted to decode this paradox through a series of explanations. Some statistical, others philosophical and a few cosmological. Before we explore these stories, it's essential to understand that my modern astrobiology, planetary science and cosmology converge on one fact. The ingredients of life are everywhere. NASA's Kepler mission, for example, and the James Webb Space Telescope have detected organic molecules in distant nebula and water vapor in the atmosphere of exoplanets light years away from Earth. Meteorites like the Mochison, which fell in Australia in 1969, contain amino acids, the building blocks of protein that form life. The same molecules have been detected on comets, Mars and even the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. If the universe is chemically fertile and biologically capable, then Fermi's question grows sharper. Perhaps the silence is not absence, perhaps it is concealment, or perhaps its instruments are tuned to the wrong frequencies of existence. So the first and most widely discussed explanation is the rare earth hypothesis proposed by Peter Ward and Donald Brownlee in their book Rare Earth. Why complex life is uncommon in the universe? They argue that microbial life might be common, but intelligent life capable of building civilization requires an improbable convergence of geological, chemical and astronomical factors. Earth benefited from a stable orbit, a large moon that stabilizes its tilt plate tectonics regulating climate and the protective presence of Jupiter deflecting all the comets. According to Ward and Brownlee, the cosmos may be full of bacteria, but very few planets ever produce beings who can ask questions like we do. The second theory is the Great Filter Theory, originally introduced by economist Robin Hansen. It suggests that somewhere along the path from dead matter to space-faring intelligence, there exists a nearly insurmountable barrier, a stage that almost no species can pass. The filter could lie behind us, perhaps 
The leap from single call to multicellular life is extremely rare or ahead of us, meaning civilizations tend to self-destruct before they achieve interstellar reach. Nuclear war, uncontrolled AI or ecological collapse could be examples of such filters. And a third theory, the self-destruction hypothesis, bells upon the great filter. Carl Sagan and Frank Drack both noted that technological species may not survive their own advances. The same intelligence that enables spaceflight also enables weapons of extinction. Civilizations might bloom briefly and then perish, their radio signals fading like echoes in the void before others arise to hear them. The fourth explanation, and the biggest one, is the zoo hypothesis, which was first proposed by John A. Ball at MIT. It suggests that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations know of us, but deliberately avoid contact much like zookeepers observing animals without interference. Humanity might be part of a cosmic ethical quantrain allowed to develop without disruption until it reaches a level of maturity. A fifth perspective is the simulation hypothesis championed by philosopher Nick Postrom. If reality itself is a computational construct, then aliens might be outside our simulated universe. In such a case, the reason we do not detect them is that our programmed reality does not include external civilizations. They exist beyond the simulation's boundaries. And the sixth theory is the Dark Forest Hypothesis, drawn from Lou Sixon's Three Body Problem Triology and based on game theory. It suggests that every civilization hides in silence out of fear, in a universe where resources are finite and motives uncertain, revealing one's existence would invite annihilation. Does the galaxy quite not because it is empty, but because it is full of terrified civilizations, each whispering in the cosmic dark? A seventh explanation lies in the temporal displacement hypothesis. Civilizations may not coexist in time. The galaxy is billions of years old and intelligent species might arise and vanish in separate epochs. We could be early, late or simply living in a period which is interval between other intelligent ages. The scientific search for extraterrestrial life began not with telescopes, but with chemistry. In 1953, the Miller-Urey experiment simulated the early Earth's atmosphere and produced amino acids, demonstrating that the ingredients of life arise naturally under the right conditions. This experiment, documented in Science magazine, laid the foundation for abiogenesis the theory that life emerges spontaneously from non-living chemistry, given energy and time. Astrobiology has since expanded this search beyond Earth. Mars has been humanity's first target. Data from NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance rovers, along with the European Space Agency's ExoMars mission, reveal sedimentary layers once filled with water in complex organic molecules buried in Martian rocks. Methane spikes detected in Mars atmosphere suggest possible microbial activity, though no definite biosignatures have so far been confirmed. In the case of Mars, Robert Zubrin argued that Mars may still shelter dormant life underground surviving a briny echo fires shielded from ultraviolet radiation. But let's talk beyond Mars. The icy moons of the outer solar system offer even more tantalizing prospects. Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, conceals a vast ocean beneath its frozen crust. Observations from the Galileo and Juno missions reveal geysers 
venting water vapors, signs of hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor, conditions similar to those that birthed life on Earth. Similarly, a moon of Saturn spews plumes containing hydrogen, methane and organic compounds. The Cassani proverb detected these in 2015, prompting astrobiologists like Chris McKay of NASA's MS Research Center to describe Enclidius as a world that checks all the boxes for habitability. Farther afield, Exoplanetary research has transformed our understanding of cosmic biology. The Kepler and TESS telescopes have confirmed over 5,000 exoplanets, many within the habitable zone, where liquid water could exist. Among them, Kepler 45-2b stand out for their Earth-like potential. The spectroscopic analysis has revealed atmospheres in, are rich in carbon dioxide, water vapor, and even possible hints of oxygen or methane, the two chemical markers of life. The James Webb Space Telescope now extends the search with infrared precision, capable of detecting biosignatures in exoplanet atmospheres light years away. In 2023, JWST identified dimethyl sulfide a molecule produced only by life on Earth in the atmosphere of exoplanet K218b. Though this finding remains under scrutiny, it represents the closest evidence yet for extraterrestrial biology. 